At the start of the holidays, our Aegis Reclaimer, the Reunion Rail, was docked up in Area 18 on Arcorp. And with Jumptown having also just launched for the first time at Hurston of all places, I was curious to go check it out with a few of our community members on Discord. Now I didn't have any gear here at Area 18, but we had all of our personal gear on board the Reclaimer and so I figured I could just pull the ship, go aboard to gear up and then jump back off again. But in the elevator I noticed the ship's head marker dropping, falling into the planet below. I think we've just had a bit of a problem. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh god, I hope, I hope this is a mistake. But it doesn't look like it is. The Reclaimer fell through the planet. Oh. The Reclaimer... With all your stuff on it. ...has just fallen through the hangar. It's now 11 kilometers below me. Now I try killing the game with Alt F4 and returning to see if that maybe reset things, but really I knew that the ship was effectively lost. And now I had to explain that to the crew. I pulled the reclaimer into a hangar to get some gear out of it and it just immediately fell through the floor. It's just... So I Alt f 4 and came back because I could see it falling through the planet, you know, below me. I could see its marker falling through the planet and it's, it's gone. gone. So after a stopover in New Babbage, where we'd also put in a claim for the ship, we'd gear up and still go and check out Jump Town. If you just want to get straight back to salvaging about the Reunion Rail, go to the timestamp that you see on screen right now. But as Jump Town was the reason we lost the ship effectively, I thought it would be best to just include this segment in this episode. I'm 163 kilometers out now, I'm going to shoot over it at full speed in the Herald and see what I pick up. Over the holiday period we'd experienced more than our fair share of bugs in the game and Jump Town would be no exception. And when we return to the rail, we'll see the most commonly asked about bug and its consequences. Okay, 20 kilometers, I'm not picking anything up yet. What are we up to? I jump, down. jump Down. It's gaming Jeff, hey Jeff, good to see you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we Don't got something. Me, I got something. Oh, I see an A1 spirit. An A1 spirit. There's a bunch of empty ships on the ground. There's a Cutlass Black. Cutlass Black star left empty on the ground. There is an A1 bomber in the air. Um, there was something else I couldn't identify, but um, I'll, I'll do another fly by now. I'm not sure if they picked me up or not. The Herald is not very stealthy, but it is very fast in a straight line. Arathon's 50 out. People, you can you can use me as a jump point, by the way, if you wanted to. I'm in the air. Oh, are we beginning? I mean, we're here. Jump Town on Hurston is an island, as we saw during PTU, and the air here, I can report, is no longer intoxicating, which it turns out that was just a bug as well. Yeah, okay, Vanguard that hasn't Ooh. been modified or as well. Oh. Okay. Bombs. Yeah, the A1 is dropping bombs, just be warned. I was heading in for a landing. Yeah, there's no uh, comma right now. No. Try to take out the A1. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, go for it. Engage it. Okay, Ooh, I'm on the ground. Is that the only confirmed hostile? At the moment, yeah. It's only confirmed active Ooh. hostile. Ooh. You want me to do a first and in a very inaccurate bombing run of the place? No, because you just described it as very inaccurate. And we're on the grounds nearby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are all. Oh, I thought I didn't know anyone was on the ground yet. And that the ship was inbound and the fireworks were really about to begin. Oh, there's an unmarked Turk coming in. Ooh, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Unmarked. Is it an A2 or a C2? Anyone know? Oh, that's an A2. Oh, A2. <laughs> that's an A2. That's an A2. Yeah. <laughs> I am barely alive right I'm now. still alive. It didn't get me, but it was. It looked where... great. A2, 20 degrees. He's coming back in. He's coming back in. Guys. Oh, oh, yeah, oh he's, he's, he's on my line. God damn it. Uh, he did drop. He's coming ah, back in. Run. Yeah, it's A2 it's coming back in. Oh, A2's coming back oh. in. For the time being, we just try to dodge the bomb blasts making it to ground. Where is the horizon? Ooh, oh. That was kind of close to the ground. No! Arathorn was hit by a bomb, but we had some friendly ships heading in and they would tie the A2 up in a dogfight. Oh, oh, yeah, shots! Like, I, I... Now would be the time to go for the airlock, to be honest, because if, if that thing comes back. Yeah. I would like to voice my agreement in that in that assumption. In, in, in. Okay, cycling. Good luck. Indeed. Right. No contact yet. All right, breaking left. Oh, right, okay. I guess we're right. Breaking right. Pirate. With the far jug room. Nothing. No contact in this Nothing jug yet. room. No contact in the other jug room. Um. 
check the little okay. back room there and I think we're clear. Yeah, no one in here. Someone had been here though. Oh, there's drugs in the airlock over here, guys. And the A2's final bomb would create an unusual effect in the skylight room. So I don't... Oh, what the hell was that? Ooh. I think that was the A2. Oh, okay. It looks like the room with the skylight might not be um, immune because the explosion definitely extended to that room. Or we're going to start pulling? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're well. here, aren't we? If you go to the other airlock, right, just make sure it's always cycled in. Um, if you see it cycling the other way, it means someone's trying to come in. And that's a good, a good warning. Oh. For a lot of people with us on this night, it was their first ever jump town, but Yarek was ready to collect a load of drugs in his Cutlass Black already on scene. Oh, I have a Cutlass Black if you want to start loading. Okay, cool. I'll stop moving the drugs into uh, an airlock then. Do you need me on you? Yes, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. I'll open it up and then just throw them into your ship. Yarek was here and I was ready to load, but the old jump town airlock bug is still a problem this patch. Oh, oh, oh no, do you know what I've done? This is still a bug where you can get stuck in the ceiling of jump town. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, there's just no way to escape it, I don't think. Uh, no track during beam. I don't think so. We've seen this a lot in the past. There is no way out, and just to show how easy it is to fall into this problem, Cyrus would also end up in here as well. Oh no, you're up here too. So that would be a relog and a fast travel back to New Babbage. And we're picking things up a few days later here, but the Aspire Grand Hotel did not want to let me go immediately. At the moment, the hab door would open. And when I woke up in here, I thought, oh, that's weird. There's an awful lot of empty drinks bottles lying around. <laughs> Uh, I guess maybe I am not the first person that's been trapped in this room today. Relogging to a different room fixed the issue, and I was free to head for the spaceport. Yes, okay, this this one opened. Uh, let's go load up the ship again. Yes, we were starting with a fresh ship again. This is just unavoidable sometimes, just like after a patch drops, for example but the lessons that we'd learned from the first couple of days would help us get things prepped faster. And all of our surplus items purchased were moved to New Babbage when the last patch dropped. Consumable items such as food though, well, we'd need to buy those fresh again. And as you will know, I have a habit of letting the thirst meter get into the red, so keeping liquids to hand is something I've become a lot more conscious of. As I boarded the rail, Cyrus was heading for Kelto outside of the hospital to buy Cruise Lux drinks in bulk. In episode 3, we saw that our shared storage boxes were disappearing left and right unless we kept them on a cargo grid. So in the cargo bay, I'd get to work on setting up a weapons box. Oh, they don't they don't sell Cruise Lux here. We're going to be drinking a new flavor. <laughs> oh, what's that? Cruise Dark. <laughs> but can you buy in bulk? The weapon box at least has a, uh, a respectable amount of stuff in it now. Next, I'd set up a utility box filled with uniforms, tractor beams, med guns, and things like that. And for IDing the boxes, I thought I'd try something new. So, what I'm doing is I'm putting items on top of our boxes, right? These will probably end up vanishing. Uh, who knows, right? The box with the sextet on top of it, sextant, I don't know, however you say that, um, that is got, that's got like uniforms and utility items and things like that in it. The cookie jar is on top of the weapon box. And finally, an armor box. We were foregoing personal storage, instead just using the ship's own inventory. I just throw my my own armor set into the ship's inventory and all that, so I don't need like a personal box. You kind of feel like with the current state of persistence, personal boxes, yeah, they just, they're just not feasible. Well, ideally, we wouldn't even need the personal box. We would just have a locker in our room or something that actually worked? Yeah, right, yeah. As I explained the little science test that I wanted to perform, I had no idea that heading up to the habitation deck was also going to be a bit of an adventure on this day. The science is going to be spreading picos and shit around the ship and then seeing if they vanish when we enter landing zones. Yeah, yeah, oh my god. Oh, oh. Now it's closed. I'm just going to stand on the edge of the door until you get the elevator back, I guess. Wait, why is it moving? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'm not. At least I'm not falling. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why is it here? Why did you come salvage hold? I don't need this. <laughs> there we go. Door's open. <laughs> uh, 
That was very odd. It's a perfectly healthy server, I promise you. <laughs> So, Vlaz had posited a theory that the garbage collection is clearing out onboard items, was happening more often or more noticeably when we enter the landing zone or got near a station. And this would make sense given the amount of trash that was previously causing problems at station hangars and the like. So, we would place a boatload of Picos on board and make observations before we land and then after we land to see if we can see any effect. We'd also leave our trash around to see if it is cleaned up too, or as we saw previously, kept around while other more useful objects vanished. Okay, this is good prep to get underway. Shit. We'd previously climbed the Bounty Hunter up a little, with the goal of reaching Extreme Risk Targets or ERTs. We did not have access to these bounties at the time, which are made up of several large ships usually, Hammerheads, Hercules, even Reclaimers sometimes, but we do have the rep for them now, and they are often laden with valuable cargo as well. We're very slowly getting away. <laughs> We were not going out supported for this first run, but Chief would be catching up to us shortly, so we'd have an extra gunner on board. There was just one formality to get out of the way. Microtech wanted us to eliminate one of their very low stakes targets first, before the bounty missions would open up for us in this region. And the target was on my favourite moon, Calliope. Can we, can we jump straight there, or are you pulling a cut jump? I mean, it's, it's pretty close to shooting. Like, it's really close. In fact, we, in fact, the line we're on, we might drop out directly on top of it, so. Oh, okay. We're like, we're not far from it. 15 kilometers away? Yeah. <laughs> you just got locked up. Contact, you've got a Mustang Delta. I was curious about the local area as the mission had hinted that the caterpillar rack may be nearby. Probably nothing, and I'm not gonna like spend a whole bunch of time looking around or anything. I was just curious to see if this was in fact a caterpillar or not. Alright, so I've got an ERT from Shubin Processing SPMC 10 on Calliope. Wait, do we want to do it on Calliope or do we want to do it on Microtech? Well Calliope would be less likely to result in hard death from falling. Would it? It's lower gravity. Oh, you mean for the targets? Yeah, okay. I understand, yeah. <laughs> Is Chief coming aboard? Chief, what are you flying? I'm in a cutter. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're coming aboard. I guess we could set down over here. Calliope is my favourite moon. I like its stark lack of colour during the day, and at dawn or dusk, like we were experiencing here, the rich grey sky feels comforting to me. But that said, flying in it is difficult, especially for a poor pilot like myself, much more difficult than the clear skies of, say, Microtech. The wind is very strong. We're on the ground. The Reclaimer is often described as having influence from the Nostromo in the Alien franchise, and at several points during our night's adventure, the backdrop of Calliope would only add to that impression. The ship is rocking a little bit. And it turns out that when Cyrus accepted the ART, he wasn't sure what moon this was. Right, well, let's head to the much nicer moon of Calliope. This is Calliope. <laughs> yeah, this is why, why I was hesitant, because, like, fighting in this, in this ship, I like to think I'm getting better at piloting the ship, but I'm not good at piloting the ship, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll give it, a, give it the old college try. We'd be jumping to the far side of the moon, and I was just hoping that we'd end up in the light rather than the dark. Into the dark as well. It didn't take long before we could start identifying targets. Oh, okay. We got a Karak. 
Carrots. Two Carrots. Two Carrots. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what's the target? Is that Redeemer? It's a Redeemer. Yeah, it's a Redeemer. Wait. All right, so that's gotta that's gotta go first. Okay, quick. sure. The Redeemer has four of the 85B Gatling guns on board, and with ballistics able to ignore shields, our Reclaimer is not a super durable ship. It's got the big old ballistics. Oh shit! Yeah. Are we in trouble here? Have we bitten off more than we can chew? Possibly. <laughs> if we can, if we can get rid of the Redeemer, we'll be fine. Because everything else is just lasers, and that that'll just smack off our giant shields, and no one cares. So I just need to blast the Redeemer before it can blast us. It's got bigger guns in us, though, right? Well, it's got the same guns. It's just got more of them. The Redeemer is closing. Taking the ship you are living off of into a fight is always tense, but this one felt much more so. Well, they're still bouncing off of each other a little bit. Yep. Oop. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, we're four kilometers right now. 3.7. All family of ships just. Oop, 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 oop. Here we go. Shots incoming. I am. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Oh my god. Just gonna to that redeemer. I'm trying. <laughs> Definitely taking fire. Yeah. yeah, we're too far from it. Pushing us in towards it. It is hitting us though, I'm just letting you know. But for a moment here, the redeemer would lose its status as the biggest threat to a pair of Karaks. Oh my god, oh my god, the cat! oh my god! <laughs> we didn't die, we didn't die. <laughs> that was genuinely goddamn terrifying. Okay, uh, Redeemer condition, Redeemer looks like it has red, it has red nose, red tail. I'm just trying to bring us around on it now. Okay, 500 meters, 12 o'clock. Yeah, good work, good work. The Redeemer was gone, and the remaining ships were much less of a threat. Oh, they just crashed into each other. <laughs> First character's down. Good work, good work. Right, I'm gonna wait till we close on my character a little more. Yep. I have about a thousand rounds left, so I need to be accurate. Good, yeah. Okay, closing. We are closing now. Alright. Alright, character's down. Good work, good work. Really great, okay. It was behind us. Or it's off to starboard. Oh, yeah, I got it, I see it. Closing hard, closing hard. It's a weird bug. Sometimes you just lose the right. Good work. Sweet. Pieces of it. What do you think? We go check out the cargo first or the. Yeah, the cargo yeah. first, right? The ships were all soft dead, but the C2 was about to buck the trend. I don't think I can scan it from the turret. I'll try, I'll try scanning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> well. well. Since it's hard dead, you should just be able to crack it if you're just going to crack it. Well, the boxes survive. The bo yeah, the boxes will be fine. Because okay. any boxes that would have been gone would already be gone from the hard dead. Okay, cool. Chief would be joining me on the bridge while Cyrus went for the cargo. I guess I will get suited up to go outside. Welcome aboard. Now me and Chief could get to work. A little to your right. Uh, a little more to your right so you can get a little bit closer. How about there? Now we're cooking. This is gonna fill the buffer. Alright. Alright, let me know when the ship's landed so I'll head out. Watch okay. Their buffer was full, so we needed to go empty it. And on the way, I had time to reflect on the fight that we just had. I'm amazed that, that hitting that Carrick didn't kill us. Like, that was terrifying. I saw the one, because they were, you know, they're both coming at us, and I saw the one, and we just missed it. And then that second one, like, it was, it was close enough that we could almost have avoided it, you know, but... Are we landed? processing for us. What size boxes are we doing here? 16s or 8s? I would say 8s. They're just a bit easier to manage. Makes sense to me. 
As we began emptying out the buffer, Cyrus had some bad news for us about his investigation of the Hercules cargo. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else out here. Really? That's a really well. unlucky crash. Yeah, that's a really unlucky crash because I know they can lose up to like 95% of their cargo. Yeah. But I guess we just got a really unlucky one. Well, hopefully we'll have more luck with the, um, with the, uh, Karaks, maybe. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Speaking of Karaks, I'm looking right at one. It's almost <laughs> right behind the ship. <laughs> wow. Oh, Chief, yours is so neat and tidy on that top row there. <laughs> <laughs> it almost looks like they're on a grid, right? It's amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna head back to the bridge. Removing cargo from a carrack is impossible right now for large containers. If we zap it, do you lose cargo? Yes. If it gets hard killed, yes, you lose cargo. Fracturing it counts, right? It's hard killing yes. it. Oh. Huh. So you're, you're the one that's close to us, right? The one I can see. Starboard rear? Okay. Before reaching Cyrus, I have a moment of concern. We just got locked up. It's probably the turrets at the base. Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in here. Barrel, iron. Barrel is good. I'd heard of a way to save cargo from being destroyed with the ship when you hard kill it. If you take them off the grid though, they will survive, won't they? These rooms that are full to the ceiling, there's no way I'd be able to get it off the grid at all. So, with whatever Cyrus could get out now clear of the ship, we'd get to work with dismantling it. We'd be skipping the whole scraping of RMC today and just going straight for the construction materials of the ship. Drifting. Not all ships, it seems, are fully configured to break into smaller pieces on fracturing. The Karak here stayed in essentially one piece. Okay, to the right, to the right. Okay. okay, cool, cool. This is 332 SCU. Is it in pieces or is it a single piece? It looks like a single piece. We had no choice but to lose the excess material by overfilling the buffer. Wow, we are drifting. Yeah, okay, good. Next, I'd need to land so Cyrus could move the cargo on board. A lot more had survived the fracturing this time. Let me just make sure the elevator is reachable. Time of day, but I'm lucky that it's on the ground at all. <laughs> the claw is making noises. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort that out real quick. Uh, okay, that was weird. What happened? After I let go of that tungsten box, it just ceased to exist. E. Oh, okay, I see you, don't I? On the night side of Calliope, the area around the ship was again very atmospheric as Cyrus moved the cargo on board. Do you need anyone to come back there and help you move those boxes? Because I'm a chief, you're still unloading the um, buffer, right? Right. Okay, cool. And it is breathable here, so we don't even need to worry about... Uh... I didn't need to wear a helmet to breathe outside, though I was leaving myself armor open to the dangers of face huggers. Uh... Yeah, this, 
This looks like a 16, I think. Yeah, that's probably what it's called. Yeah, I'll take it back up. Okay. Get that piece of cargo off of it. What would be really useful with this ship as well is if you could have the elevator down and then independently of that open the doors of different decks, right? Because then you could just yeah. pass things straight up, you know? Calliope may be breathable, but it is also extremely cold, and I would be glad to get back inside the ship. I call the elevator. Oh yeah, go ahead. Is it loaded or is it... Um... It's unloaded. Make some effort to return to indoors. Oh. Our box is up there. I'm just grabbing whatever, you know. Put some more boxes. We can make a stop on the cargo hold deck and. Can we double stack these, do you think? I wouldn't risk double stacking the boxes here today, but it would mean some unorthodox access to the control panel. Yeah, the problem is uh, our reaching the buttons. You can reach that button, don't you worry. You let me know when you're good to go up. Yeah, I'm on it. Okay. Going to which deck, sorry? Salvage hold or. Uh, yeah, for now, salvage hold just to get rid of these big boxes. Okay. Put those little ones on the, the cargo hold. The big containers were going in the salvage hold, while the smaller boxes would be put in the cargo bay. Hey, I'm free. Flip <laughs> <laughs> right at the start. There we go. We'd return with the second load of boxes from outside as well, and then head on up to the salvage balconies to observe Chief's handiwork emptying out the carrack into boxes on board the ship. Yeah. That is looking so tidy. Wow. I don't know why, but that box wants to bounce. There were still several wrecks nearby, and it was our goal to break them all up and collect them. But while searching for the other Karak, we'd suffer what is the most asked about problem in Star Citizen, a 30k server crash. Uh oh. Oh, 30k. Oh, 30k. <laughs> How much of the cargo will be saved? Oh, it should be all of it. All of it. Back at New Babbage, we can now show exactly what happens following a 30k crash in the current patch when you are laden with cargo and items. No, I didn't need to go on board, I could have just stored the ship again immediately and it would have been fine, but I wanted to head in and see if everything was as we left it. Looks like the big stacks are all here, yeah? So with the cargo confirmed as secure, it was time to head to the Planetary Services Office in the Commons of New Babbage. Here we go. For the first lot, which is which is by SCU, it's 144 uh, SCU. That's 879,000. So let's say nine nine fifty so far. And then for the 42 units, <laughs> 2.47 million. So I'll round that up to 3 million. Yeah. And then there's the uh, El Truca Toxin, which we can't sell. But that's a million each. That's a million credits each. You know, that's yeah. pretty great. For one ERT, yeah. That's <laughs> for one ERT, right. <laughs> I'd make sure Chief and Cyrus got their cut right away. Send you your money first, Cyrus. It was a, it was a good trip. It was, there was some definitely some alien vibes going on. Um, it's a shame about the 30k, but at least it means we can show there were a lot of people in the comments who 
ask what happens if you think you came with cargo on board and least now we, we can show them. AI characters are dangerous pilots. <laughs> As you saw this past week was not super smooth sailing when it comes to bugs that we were encountering but most bugs have a workaround or are only a minor setback and with a little extra work you can pick yourselves up and push on. We also made a lot of credits even though we didn't complete all of the ERT salvage and we were eager to get back out there to try again this time with support on our side though as there really is no sense in taking more risk than you need to. How will we fare in the next such engagement? Join us next time to find out. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. And in this video, I want to thank them not only for supporting the channel, but also for supporting for the year of 2023, where the channel certainly had ups and downs, I'd be the first to admit. But having the support of generous patrons definitely did keep this channel going through some rough times. And I'm looking forward to an exciting 2024 with everything that's coming to Star Citizen that we'll be able to cover here on the channel thanks to your support. Thank you. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Jace NLD, Yama, Jack Sayer, David Jones, and Ned Plantagenet, who all recently became backers of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you all for your generous support. You guys are awesome, and I look forward to us having adventures together on Discord very soon. Have a wonderful new year, everybody, and we'll be back with more from the Reunion Rail in January.